Welcome to Stereo 3D Productions and this Dolphin VR setup tutorial for Metroid Prime GameCube Edition. Last year, we covered how to set up the first Dolphin VR game I started a series on, Zelda Twilight Princess. Now it's time to get on to the second one, a game that works so well you could mistake it for a real seated VR creation, Metroid Prime for the GameCube. Yes, I'm only covering the GameCube edition in this video because it's the one I have most experience with. I've heard the Metroid Prime Trilogy edition for the Wii has some impressive motion control retrofit going, and yes, I eventually plan to check that out. But for now, since I find the GameCube edition to be already an amazing experience, I felt it would be important to cover it first. Not to mention, the Trilogy edition might come with additional problems I need to investigate. Let's begin by showing you where to get a copy of the Dolphin VR emulator. You'll find a link to it in the description. At the time of making this video, the most current version is 5.0-250. Download yourself a copy and install it. We're going to do the very same as my tutorial for Zelda Twilight Princess. We will pretend you've just made a fresh installation of Dolphin VR. The emulator is going to first need a few changes to its main configuration before we can get a game ready to go. So first click Options and then Configure. In the General tab, make sure Enable Cheats is checked. Don't worry, we're not actually going to cheat, we just need this option to enable a few VR-specific fixes. For this whole process to work, it's best to have your games listed on the Dolphin VR main window. So next, click on the Paths tab. This is where you'll tell Dolphin where your ROMs are. Use the Add button to specify as many different folders as you want. I, for example, have one folder for each game. Next up, go to the Advanced tab and check Enable CPU Clock Override. Without doing this step, we'll start having CPU timing problems when we try to use Direct3D 11, so this is very important. Make sure to leave the slider at 100%. We just want to keep emulated CPU usage constant so the game can run consistently, but we don't want to slow it or accelerate it. You can close that window by hitting OK. Next, it's time to open the graphics settings by clicking the icon in the top bar. First in the General tab, make sure Back End is set to Direct3D11. Yes, the default is OpenGL, and that may be because it's a more stable option, but its performance is a fraction of what we get with Direct3D. These games just don't run fast enough on OpenGL for virtual reality. Remember the importance of enabling CPU clock override in the previous step. Games will not run correctly with Direct3D if you didn't do that. Also, keep in mind, if you ever get a flurry of strange errors while running in Direct3D, you can revert to OpenGL for troubleshooting. Next, go to the Enhancements tab. I like to set my internal resolution at 3 times native, which suits most second-generation VR headsets, but you're free to try different options if you want to balance detail and performance. This setting will make a big difference. If you go too high, the frame rate will be severely affected and the emulator will experience slowdowns. You can also play with anti-aliasing and anisotropic filtering, but I've kept mine at default for now since I didn't find any changes necessary. Keep in mind, anti-aliasing will also affect game performance significantly. We're done here, so you can hit the close button in this window. I will leave it to you to configure your controls, but I will point out one important hotkey you should configure for VR. This is a seated VR experience after all, so you're going to need a way to recenter your orientation and position so the game faces the correct way. In the main Dolphin VR window, click on Options, then on Hotkey Settings. Find the Free Look Reset option and set it to what you want. By default, this hotkey should be set to Shift and R. I personally change mine to F11 for more convenience. Now that you've got a way to reset your orientation and position, you can click OK to close this window. At this point, you should have a main configuration that can work with most games supported by Dolphin VR. 
you might have noticed that it's identical to the setup I used for Zelda Twilight Princess. There's usually just one more step for each game you run, which mostly has to do with enabling game-specific AR codes that will apply visual tweaks. Most of these visual tweaks involve disabling culling so you don't see game objects popping in and out of existence in VR. Metroid Prime is no exception to this. Without applying these tweaks, anything out of view of Samus's gun will simply not render at all. So looking right or left by turning your head will result in a view of absolute nothingness. Metroid Prime needs just a few AR codes to be enabled in order to unleash the full 360 degree glory of its game world. With your games library listed on Dolphin VR, you'll want to right click on Metroid Prime and go Properties. In the Properties, go to the AR Codes tab. These are the options you should enable. Disable culling of terrain outside of camera view. Disable culling of special functions outside of camera view. Disable culling of wall crawler swarms outside of camera view. Disable culling of particles outside of camera view. Disable culling of unknown outside of camera view. And finally, make sure to check this code must be on. Yeah, that one's pretty self-explanatory. For the most part, this configuration has run very, very well for me, although I've discovered compromises that can be made with these options. Say you're trying to optimize performance. For some reason, you're getting little frame drops and slight game slowdowns, and you want to squeeze out a little performance budget. You can experiment by unchecking these options. Disable culling of special functions outside of camera view, disable culling of particles outside of camera view, and disable culling of unknown outside of camera view. Unchecking these three and leaving the other options enabled might actually buy you a few frames, all without drastically affecting the game visuals. Go ahead and hit close, we're ready to play Metroid Prime for the GameCube, probably one of the best VR retrofits for any GameCube game supported by Dolphin. While writing this guide, I had to try and think of actual legitimate game-breaking problems I could bring up, but the only thing that comes up in my mind are mostly a series of nitpicks more than anything else. I've yet to actually have my game break or run into an issue that limits or halts progression. After almost five hours in, I've more often found myself forgetting the game wasn't ever made for VR in the first place. The only real complaint I have is that scanning can be a little tricky because the vertical axis on the scanning aim system isn't tied to your head tracking. Sometimes you'll have a target that's way up high and it can prove tricky to fiddle the stick around until you hit the sweet spot and get to scan what you're trying to lock onto. In addition to that, in places where you cannot scan, if you do bring up the scan visor, the scan UI will appear as if it were a few kilometers in front of you. But that's about it though, and these problems have yet to cause me actual hardship other than needing a couple of extra seconds to lock on to a tricky target. There are some minor graphical issues, but again it's nothing to complain about when it comes to gameplay. When you enter elevators, during the animation you'll notice a strange overlay momentarily showing and disappearing a few times, and it's at the wrong aspect and it's not displaying correctly in stereoscopic 3D. This problem only happens during the elevator cutscene and lasts less than 3 seconds, so it's far from a big deal. Lastly, the menus can give some mild eyesores since some elements are in 3D but have 2D elements over them at the wrong depth. Again, you'll see this so rarely that it's not an actual problem, it's just an issue I point out for full disclosure of how this game runs. That's it, we're pretty much done with Metroid Prime GameCube Edition. You're now set to enjoy this massive adventure by Nintendo and you might just do like me and often completely forget that what you're playing is an emulation of a nearly two decade old game that was never built with VR in mind. It plays like a first party title and sure, it may not support motion controls, but that should never stop you from trying a game. VR isn't primarily about the motion controls. It's about feeling like you exist in a fictional game world, and this setup actually accomplishes that very well. This series of steps may work for most GameCube games that Dolphin VR supports, but it's very possible that there are games that won't comply with the main configuration I showed, and it's also possible that some games won't have AR cheat items for camera culling, so feel free to experiment if you're trying something else.
The last release of Dolphin VR was in 2016, so updates should not be a problem. We're probably not going to get any major changes to the emulator for a while. This means that the information in this tutorial should remain valid, and if it were to expire, I'd simply scrap this video and put up a new updated one. We're very fortunate that VR runtimes have been built future-proof from the inception of commercial VR because so far I can confirm Dolphin VR works with all second-generation VR headsets. The Rift S, the Quest, the Index, the Cosmos, and all other headsets that support Steam VR. Thanks for watching everyone. If you have questions, comments, or suggestions regarding this tutorial, go ahead and post it in the comments. You think you've built up an even better configuration for this game? Go ahead and share it, please. Everyone who drops by here will definitely be interested in what you have to say, including me. This is Stereo 3D Productions with a Dolphin VR setup tutorial for Metroid Prime for the GameCube, and I shall see you next time.